Good morning, RFF family. Good morning, viewers. Raise a hallelujah. Say amen. Hallelujah. Over there at your houses, get up, shake it off. Get out of CNN. Get out of all the other stuff going on and get into his word. We're here. We worship a mighty God. Amen. Amen. So I really sense in the spirit that God wants a breakthrough. And we need a breakthrough. We all need a breakthrough every day, right? Every day there's a breakthrough. But today, specifically, I think there's a bigger breakthrough. A bigger breakthrough to the realization of who we really are. Into our identity and staying in that identity and not allowing the enemy to play with your mind through every single belief system out there. You know how many belief systems contradict each other? But there's only one that really matters. The one where he says to have single eye, a single-mindedness, a single eye, a one perspective, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And there's no division in that. So I think if we all take our belief systems down and put on the mind of Christ and allow his perspective to be the guiding lamp to our lives, I think we'll have a better process in this unity thing and, and coming together and combating the lies that Satan tries to throw at us every day. Yeah. He doesn't want his body to succeed. Amen. He wants people to live in fear. He wants all this, this, these spirits out there that are rising up. He wants it to even get into the church because it is. He wants it to be like that. But it's on us to fight against that within our own minds, within our own hearts, and within our own lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray over the tithe and offering. Amen. And we're going to get into some worship. We're going to break through. We're going to raise a hallelujah. And we're going to fight our battle. <laughs> Amen. Those are the three worship songs. We, I just felt like we just need to shout, you know. The governor says that we, we shouldn't sing in the church. I don't. That's crossing the line to me. We need to worship our God. Yeah. And that's why I said we need to raise a hallelujah. We need to have a breakthrough, right? And we need to worship our God this morning. We, we need to sing louder than we sing before. Amen. I'm going to pray over the tithes. As I, after I pray over the tithes and worship, you can come put your tithes in the front. Amen. So, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for the givers, God. We thank you for the things that you've given us, God. We thank you, Father God, that we don't allow money to control us. We don't allow anything to control us but your Holy Spirit. Father God, I thank you, Father God, as we are obedient, as there's tithers are obedient unto you, God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for your precious promises that are released. And I thank you, Father God, for the protection that's released. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Let's get ready to worship. Amen. Yes, come on. Hallelujah.
Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name. Father God, we just come before you, Lord, and we just thank you because what, what surrounds us is you. You are the one, oh God. You are the one that sustains us and preserves us and protects us and Oh, God, you are the one that we can run unto as a high tower. You are, you are the one, Father God, that will never fail us. And, Lord, I thank you, Father, for what you are doing, even doing now, Lord. You are doing within our world, within our country. With, with, oh, yes, Lord, what you are doing, Father God. And I believe, Lord, for believers, Christians, Lord, to rise up and to be, become fighters, for this is the time, Lord. This is the time that you are calling your people to rise up. You will do your part when we do ours. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. And, Father God, I yield myself right now, Lord, to declare your word. And, Father, I yield myself to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that you have placed upon my life, Father God, that I will communicate effectively what is in your heart, Lord, and what you have placed in my heart. And yes, Father God, I will be that vessel, Lord. And Father, that I will speak forth with clarity. And Father, that people will receive with understanding. Those that are here and those that are viewing us out there. Father God, that they will be attentive to receive Knowing, Lord, it is not the voice of a man. It's a voice of God, Lord. It's you, Lord. It's you that is working, working in me, Lord, and working through each and every one of us, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord, we are living epistles known and read by men. And yes, Father God, we give ourselves to you, Lord. We are attentive to hear from your throne in the name of Jesus. I want to hear from your throne. Yes, Lord God. Oh, the oracles of God. Yes, yes, Lord. Just speak into us, Lord. Download what is necessary for us to receive, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give praise. We give honor to your holy name, Lord. Yes, Lord, we will sing the praises of you. We will not stop because you said that you will have, if we don't worship and we don't praise you, Lord, even the rocks will cry out. We will not have the rocks to cry out. We will cry out to you, Lord. You are our master. You are our king, and we will stand in obedience to you and you only. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. We welcome you. We welcome those that are viewing. Again, I want, to, I want you to make sure that you are, you can go ahead and be seated. Make sure that you are not getting, paying attention to your phones and stuff unless you're on, the, on, the, on your app or your Bible app and following along. Uh, and those also out there, it's very easy to be distracted in, there if you're sit, sitting there in your living room or something. Uh, or even those that even that are going to hear afterwards, uh, you need to really uh, pay attention because we are so attentive. We are so attentive to hear what 
CNN News, ABC, CBS, all them, all those news that are saying we're we're so attentive. And I'm noticing a lot of Christians are so attentive. And how do you know that? Are you in their houses and not? No, the way they respond. Actually, they don't think about it. The way they react, the, the way they react. And I know that there was, I, I, I was really struggling with this. Uh, my wife sees that, I, that I struggle, and she tries to straighten me out. But, you know, sometimes it's just, it just comes out. My flesh gets on my flesh, and I have to shake it off and shake it off. But I says, I, I just, let me just go through this because I, I need to get a hold of God. And, and I was, as I was pondering what I wanted, what I felt to minister here to, uh, this morning, is, is uh, I said, God, I want to minister something. As, as God was laying some things out for me in the scriptures, I'll, we'll go there in a little bit. Um, that I said, God, I want to minister something that's, you know, just lively and just pick up and, and just, yeah, bless the people and, and all that. And Jesus is wonderful, which is all true. It's all true. We need to be blessed, and we need to receive, and we need to, all that, all that good stuff. And, and some people say, well, I just want to just talk about Jesus, just don't talk about politics. Well, the re reason why we don't talk about politics is because, and Christians don't want to get involved in that, it's only because uh, uh, they're scared. Uh, and, and the thing is, is that we're, we're so discomforted and we're so upset about what's going on, and that is the result or the consequences of what we're paying for because we were not going up to the polls and getting people elected into the right positions and stuff. And, all. and so you get about, what, 20, 30, 40% of Christians that come out to the voting, and then they complain about how come it's turning the way it's turning out. We don't want to get involved and all that. Well, you know, the, uh, our government doesn't want to get involved uh, told us not for them us to get involved in their affairs and what they do and the mental health field They don't want you know, it, it's separation of church and state and all that stuff going on and so okay Okay, we'll, we'll go along with that and, and now and now guess what they're coming and in and me messing with the church Amen. They're messing with the church and telling the church what to do and how to worship and in California, you're not supposed to sing. And, and the thing is, is disappointing. And this, of course, frustrates me. Is that, is that you got, you got uh, the body of Christ. Some of the body of Christ uh, that are saying, okay, we got choir, and so therefore we're not going. We're going to cancel choir until, until this is. All they're doing is testing you out. Oh my God. It's like you see all these things going on, and, and it's like, okay, the next thing we're going to hear, okay, what else are they going to tell us to do? Okay, we'll do that too. What else are you going to tell us to do? And it's like, where, when are we going to start going to the throne of God and finding out what God is, God is saying? Because God is talking in the midst of it. He's not silent. It's just that we hear the voices that are louder on the outside than the voice of, of, of God. And see, the voice of God is not going to force himself. He's not going to force it. It's, a, it's like Elijah. Elijah was used to seeing the demonstrative things of God. And then he, he, and he saw the, what is it, the, the, the lightning and the, and the thunder, heard the thunder and all that. And, and God wasn't a n n none of that. And then he heard a small, still voice. That's where God was talking. And began to minister to him. And see, so we have a whole lot of voices that's going on. And I see the church moving in that direction. And so I say, well, God, you know, uh, okay, then what, as I began to ponder this, and I was spending a few hours in prayer last night, and I said, I got to put myself here aside. And I said, God, check my heart. Get my heart. I, and that's what I'm after. I, I said, get my heart. Do If I'm doing something wrong, then let me know. Let me put this out. I hear Christians that are say, God saying this, and then God saying this, and God saying this, and God saying this, and they don't match. They don't match. And yeah, he's not the author of confusion. I said, if God's telling you that and God's telling me this and all, I says, wow, okay. One of us is wrong. <laughs> so I go to the Word, and I just I don't have to go prove anything to anybody. I just go to the Word, and I say, okay, well, in my own head, they're wrong. <laughs> Because you know what? The Bible says, let every, man, let every man be a liar and God be true. Amen. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to believe the Bible. Right. I said, if they can find Bible for me, then okay, I'll go for it. I'll go for it. You know? 
Um, so as I was pondering these things and my heart was burning, it's like I heard this. And I know it was the Spirit of God because, listen out there in the viewing audience, listen to this. I heard God say to me, say, and it came through my head and over and over. And I know it's God when it does that. And, and, and he said, sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. He kept saying that. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. I said, okay, okay, okay. I know what Scripture says. I know, because God always speaks the truth. So I looked at the, at the Scripture. I didn't write it down here, but I looked at the Scripture, and uh, because it was something that just came, and and uh, I, I looked and I, and I go, okay, sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. All right. Now where is it? Okay, here it is. Joel chapter 2, verse 1 says this. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the lord is coming and for it is at hand and i got oh my god that totally fits i said that, that's you guy talking so what does he say You'll go into other things like this and help people grow and mature and all and talk Jesus and the love of God, which I'm going to talk about. But, but, and we always talk about it. But, but the thing is, he says, stay with your call. Sound the alarm. That's prophetic. And when I, I started studying a little bit on Joel, Joel is, is, uh, is the end time preacher. He's the same person that prophesied that would happen in the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts that he says and that there come in a time that there's going to be a double portion. Okay, now he's, he says this. What is it? it shall come to pass that I will pour of my spirit upon all flesh. Oh, man. So when he said this here, sound the alarm you got to let the people know. There are a lot of people. I just want to talk just about Jesus. But you're not talking about everything that Jesus said. Jesus sounded the alarm. John the Baptist sounded the alarm. Get your life in order. Repent. You know what the church needs to do today? And many pastors need to do. And I stay in that place of repentance is that we need to repent because we didn't tell the people the full gospel of warning all they wanted to do is go and just give okay just let's talk about all the good things good things the love of god love of god and the world goes oh yeah they're attracted to it and you got people in the churches and mega churches not even saved that are going there because it feels good we don't understand it but it feels good it feels good it feels good and they don't change their they don't change their heart they don't change their mind they, there's no repentance involved there and it's like they're Wow, really? And now you see them running, and so you see a lot of Christians tagging along with them, too. These are the things that, that, that frustrate me, and, and, and I'm looking at it, and I say, okay, so you've called me. That is not a popular message. It's not popular. So you call me, and people are going to be irritated. Many Christians are going to be irritated over me and what I say. They're going to be irritated over it. Pastor, get, just get out of there. I can't get out of something that God says to stay in. You know, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what the things that we need to, we need to do. Here's another th here's another scripture. Here's another scripture. Those that are viewing, don't turn me off. You need to, otherwise you do an injustice to yourself. You need to hear, "Thus saith the Lord," and not just another sermon. You need to hear it. I'm speaking with the authority of God. And I, I started off last week. Choose whom you will serve. Well, this is part two. Choose you and your serve. We're in that place. We need to make a choice. Christians need to make a choice. Joel 3, 14 says this. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. This is another word that came up to me even 
before this other one, this latest word in Joel. Multitudes, multitudes, that's what it came up. Multitudes, multitudes. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I got that down. In the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And I look at that, the, the name of Joel. The name of Joel in the Hebrew is Yahweh is God. And I look at that and I say, this is what, this is the reason why I have to shake my flesh. I can't get my fashion away because it, it, things irritate of, of what's going around. But I, th this is what I want to get across to people, to the Christian world at least. At least to the Christian world. is to know that Yahweh is God. Yeah. Yahweh means Almighty God. Yeah. So the things we hear is like we're allowing that to be Almighty. And you know what? God had God ministered to me. I believe it's for many, uh, all of you, but it's, it's up to you. Okay. God ministered to me and he says, shut the TV. Now, I only listen just a few bits. That's all. Enough to irritate me. Three. That's all it does. Three. I says, so God saying, you get irritated over this. It's because it's not truth. I mean, he's dropping these things in me. And Christians are looking at it as truth. It's not truth. Some of the things are present. I mean, he does a lot of shenanigans, okay? But, you know, let's look at the, the big picture here. Some of, the, some of the things, he goes, oh, a bunch of fake news. I, I see it myself. Oh, you're going to lie again? You know? And, and it's true. I, I've said to you, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, who, who turned his community upside on his world and whenever he, wherever he went to minister and he raised people from the dead, including his own wife. And then he had miraculous, I mean, healings taking place wherever he went in the, in the marketplace, in the church and all. But you know what? He would not allow. And I, I could, you can learn, we can learn something from him. And it's the reason why the anointing of the spirit was so strong on him, not only him, but others too, is that he will not allow news to come into his home. If, if somebody, like somebody like Lester Summerall had a newspaper, he was a young man, had a newspaper in his hand, and he invited him to his house, and he goes, he goes, he looks down, and he says, what's that under your arm? He goes, the newspaper. He goes, you can come in, but leave that out there. And then we got, we got Christians today. They got there on the media, and they're watching the television, and they're saying, what's the latest here? I mean, if you want to watch regular news, what you're going to see is in between there, the COVID, COVID, COVID. And it's like, okay, and then we got Christians that are just talking about it. Oh, we got this. Oh, somebody sneezed. All right, go get checked out. Oh, somebody's got a little slight fever. Go get checked out. It's already getting checked out, checked out, checked out. And I said, what is going on around here? Christians are becoming insane. Yes. <laughs> I know I'll get rebuttal. It's okay. I don't care. And when are we going to start fighting? When are we going to start believing what we believe, stand true what we believe and what God's Word says? When are we going to start doing that? The day of the Lord is at hand. So if you told me to turn it up, okay, I'm not going to turn, turn it up. Also, you look in your phone and all of a sudden something pops up. Ah, and you're almost like, well, okay, well, no, no, I don't want to go there. You know? It's like right away. It's all around. So the best thing to do, I'll just turn off the news. Well, when are you going to find out? I'll find out by other people. <laughs> They'll let me know. You know, but at least I'm, I'm, I'm founded upon truth. Yeah. Well, we got to do what they say. Yes, do what they say. Do what they say. Do what they say. Do what they say. It's like sticking a frog in the water and then turning up the, 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 the fire and they have no idea what's going on knowing that you're going to be cooked so they can cook their so they can eat their legs <laughs> they have no idea and I see that I'm putting I'm putting myself out there I'm, yeah I see that I see that I see Christians that are watching and they're they're so much enjoying themselves or doing whatever okay yeah yes 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 everything yes 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 Man, whatever happened, I was sharing this with Pablo the other day. Whatever happened to the regular flu season that comes through every year, every year, every year, every year, and 80 to 100,000 people or more die. I don't hear them 
Everything is COVID. You get, I, I, if I get a little snipple, I get a little something, I ain't going to say nothing. I said, you'll probably get me out of the church, and we'll kick you out until you get, go test it. Oh, my God. I've already been tested, and I'm being tested now under the fire. Many of you are, too, because you got Christians that are going to go against you. Well, the Bible says that that's going to happen, and I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to let you see. I'm, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. And, and, and it's like, and, and I'm not this kind of person that just go, ah, la, la. you know, and my personality, many of you know, I'm just real low key, lay, lay back and all that. But when the Holy Spirit comes on me and I know what's truth, I'm going to stand. I don't care if you don't like me and you talk. I'm not going to, I'm going to stand. He says, because I already, t you, you, the reason why you are going and doing whatever the, whatever CDC says is that the right CDC? You know, they, they became the qualified ones, and, and they're the, now the truth of the, uh, the prophets of the, of the land, and, and we hear them and stuff. And so, it's like, it, uh, wow, here's what's happening. And God began to drop this into me last night. He started showing me. He says, here, here, son, let me show you. Oh, thank God that he does it. It settles me down. It settles me down. And he, go, he, says, he says, you're going to have to go through it. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're going to go through it. You're going to go through it. You're going to go through it. You're not going to like it. You're going to go through it. But it's because I am bringing a squeezing to my people. Because judgment shall begin in the house of the Lord. Amen. And a decision time, that word judgment is decision. Decision. So I'm going to squeeze, and you and people around you're going to see believers are going to are going to be squeezed, and you're going to see what comes out of their mouth because now they're going to be revealed, exposed, exposed. totally. It's going to come out, and you're going to look and you say, "I thought they were really strong Christians. I thought they were strong." I mean, I saw them in church. They come to church and this and that. You know, and I thought they were strong. I mean, they had a good, they would pray when they pray. They pray good and all this. And they talk the good stuff and all and, and keeping the faith. And they tell you about how much they pray and all. You know, I thought they were good. I thought. Well, watch. This is where we got to keep our heart right. We don't criticize. It's only for your own information. That's all. Knowing it's the master, head of the church, is doing the squeezing to allow. He says, I have to do it because now sound the alarm. I'm sounding the alarm right now. I have to do this. This is what God's saying. I have to do this. He says, because I am now bringing the separation of the church. Wow. Wow. Here, <laughs> I just coughed. Do I get need to get tested? I know I'm being sarcastic. So what happened to the other flu? Oh, ironically, it disappeared. But you know what? What it is, is that it is that other flus still came around. Okay. But now they put another, they put a name to it, COVID. So I'm telling you, and the reason why God said don't listen to the news is because there's a bunch of lies. And words are seeds that are planted in the heart and they will germinate. You will find yourself when somebody says, oh, you got a little fever. And they watch, stop, examine yourself. Immediately your head goes there. Why did it go there? Because seeds were planted. Immediately. Okay. So how can God, God talk? We don't consult God. We just, oh, it's what they said. I better go take, take a test. We've got people that are taking tests and tests and tests. And just because many, are, many are, are so positive, guess what? There's a whole lot of positive people doing all the flu seasons that carriers and all. They're carriers. Same thing. But they just made a big deal out of the carriers of this other so-called uh, COVID. It's demonic. Just plain old demonic. 
And a lot of Christians are following after the demonic. I'm sorry. Well, I can't apologize for truth. That's, I'm sounding the alarm. Blow the trumpet. If God told me to sound the alarm and I don't sound the alarm, I'm in trouble with God. And I'd rather be in trouble with you than to be in trouble with God. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy 4.1 says this. Now the Spirit, say Spirit. Spirit. So that means the Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. What's coming out of the CDC, I will be bold to say, it is doctrines of devils that are coming out. And it is working. And to be able to step up and to say to the church, first of all, they, they kept us not together. We couldn't gather together. Then the president says, okay, the church is what? Essential. Essential. If it was up to some of the governors, they would say it's not essential. We'll, we'll, we'll keep the liquor stores open. We'll keep the, the, keep the clinics open of abortion open. We'll keep those things open because they're essential. We need to keep on killing babies. Even at the age of nine months old, we need to keep on killing. Come on, Christians, wake up. Wake up. I'm speaking prophetically. Wake up. Wow, really? I told you last week that it is Asherah. The goddess, pale, or bale, all that, dealing with sex, pornography. We got Baal here, Asherah here. It's all here. It was back then, and every country that worshipped that was destroyed. America is doing it today. We have those that are... It's legal to go out and, and rally or out there and, uh, what do you call it, uh, riot and stuff. But it's not legal for, well, they're saying it's not legal. It's basically, it's no law. There's no law at all. But to go and tell the church, again, the church, we attack the church. And, and you can't sing. So when you have a pastors that say, okay, our car won't sing then. What else are you going to obey? So when are we going to stand? And you know what? Here's the other thing. God spoke to me. He says, my people aren't standing yet. I'll move. I will move if my people will stand. But my people, many of my people don't stand because they really don't believe it. They know the word. They can quote the scriptures. They've been around it for years and years. But now's the time to stand, and they're not standing. And I go, oh, my Oh, my. This is the reason why I'm going to get flagged for it. I'll get persecuted for it. I, I, but it's, I'm okay with it because they did it, in the, they did it in the Bible. We have been so, so immune to whatever goes on on third world countries. It says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's happening, persecution, all that. You know, we are so desensitized. You know, and we are so comfortable, and we come to our churches, and we just have a little church that may look like church, but people's lives are not being changed. So it looks like church because we know how to have church without the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is speaking expressly. And if we would just stop, you know, if you're in love with Jesus... And those that are hearing out there in the media, if you're in love with Jesus, you would know this is the word of the Lord. You would know it. Well, don't tell me I don't love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah, but you listen to other voices and that's good, that, that contradicts what God is saying. God doesn't have a whole bunch of voices. And if it's a whole bunch of voices that's speaking through vessels, it all comes to the same. But the voices that you're hearing on the outside, it's all divided. Even the CDC is divided. They're changing almost daily. I'm, I'm looking and saying, when is there going to be good news? 
So you know what? I'm going to stick to this because this is good news right here. I'm going to stand on this. I've stood on it for 49 years, and I'm going to keep on standing on it because this here, this truth has kept my marriage together. 48 years of marriage. Why? Because we, did we have... Could we have a departed? Could we have separated? Could, yes, throughout those years, many times. But this right here kept me founded. I chose to believe this. I chose to believe this. So why would I get off? Some Christians are getting off. I said, why did you get off? Why did you get off? I said, this is the time to stay on. To stay on. Get away from Christians that are talking the talk that don't live the life. Get away. Because God is bringing a separation. Now watch. As a separation comes, the Christians that are being separated, and it doesn't mean that you can't make it. It's just that you're not going to be involved with the end time move of the Holy Spirit. Where he's going to pour his spirit, as, a, as, the, as the prophet Joel said, it would happen in the last days. It's just not going to happen because you're a Christian. If you're not standing in truth, it's just not going to happen. Oh, just God's going to pour His Spirit upon me. And you're wavering. He can't. If you're willing to believe lies, He can't. But those, kind of, those Christians, if they don't make a decision, that they're going to attack the Christians that have made a decision to stand. And they will actually turn them in. We already heard it. Some of the pastors got arrested. They, 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 it was Christians that turned them in. Christians. Not the world. Christians. But Jesus said it would happen. All they're doing is fulfilling. They need to know what the Bible says. They're fulfilling it. Well, I'm so upset. Even in the heart. There are people I know within their own hearts. Well, oh, pastor better do this because you know what? Uh... Uh, I, I think, and, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not putting, pointing any, anybody out at all. But there, there are people that will say with pastors, well, I hope that pastor gets caught. I hope he gets his. It's out there. It's out there. See, because watch. Just, just being a human, and I, if I was rebellious, I might consider that. I might consider that. Now, how much of those people that I'm not and are wavering and they're not standing and the ones that are not wavering are standing and they feel either jealous or, or they feel like, hey, come on, you need to pay attention. We live in this world here and we need to pay attention to what the world is doing. Don't you realize the kingdom of this age is coming to an end? So what is the Spirit of God saying to us in the latter days? He's express, there is an expression. That's the reason why preachers like myself, they, they really are expressing it. They're feeling it. They're feeling it. It's like right there. I don't see, I don't see us. I've been maybe a Christian 49 years, but I, I don't think it's going to go very, very, very much longer for any of us to be around. But it's getting ready. It's getting ready. What is God getting ready for? God's not going to leave the church behind. God's going to do this. God's going to move on the church, and he's going to move with people that will believe him as, as Yahweh. When somebody says, well, COVID's here. Oh, you got, there's testing over here, testing. Yahweh. Oh, come on, get real. I am real. You're fake. Yahweh is talking. Stop, shut. I don't want to hear it. Yahweh is talking. Hallelujah. This is what I have to do too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. How else is the enemy going to get to the church? How else? He has to go and pass laws. Get people to pass laws. Don't you realize that all this, all this rioting that's taking place, they've been, they've been, 
I, in fact, I was just listening to my pastor talk, ministering at life. He's from Midland, Michigan. And, uh, and, and it was something like he was, he was like t t referring to a lot of things. You know, we had the 4th of July yesterday. Okay, freedom. He's a Vietnam vet, fought in the battle there in Vietnam. And, and saying all the blood, and he went down through history of all the blood that was spilt. All the blood that was spilt. And if you look back, it was all fighting against socialism. Fighting against it. All the way. And all these lives, the spit, spilled blood of these lives have fought for socialism. A f so fight against socialism. And, and, and see, it wouldn't work. They couldn't bring down the United States. World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, Korean, well, the Korean War, and then the Vietnam War. And, on the, and then you got the war over there in, in, in Iraq and all those. You know, and, and basically, if you look at it, it's socialism. And then you got this generation believes that socialism works. It doesn't work. Look at the other countries. How's it working for them? But keep America, keep our young people stupid, and we can dictate them. We can get to dictate them. Oh, the government's not doing it. Hey, it's been doing pretty good. America rose up to world power. It's done pretty good. And they want to work, tear down our roots? What is this coming to? the end that's all it is i didn't think i'd live to see it now we're seeing it i mean my mom is 89 years old and, and uh she's seeing it now praise the lord you know to die is gain <laughs> the way i think of it but there are people's souls to be one still and i want to be a part of the end time harvest that God is, God is going to pour. If you pour in your spirit, and Joel said that, and I believe it, and I still believe in Yahweh, you know, I still believe that the Almighty God, that all things are possible, and I don't, I don't go, but COVID, but test, but this, but they said this, but they said, no, no, Yahweh is still Yahweh, and no matter, in, in front of all the buts, Amen. he's still Yahweh, Okay. So what is God looking for? God, there is a separation, and God's looking for a people that will come out and allow the anointing of the Spirit. Those are the ones that God's going to anoint. And that's up to you. It's up to you, those that are viewing, and those going to view later on. It's up to you. There's a decision time. We are now living in the decision time. This is not the time. I, I, with urgency, I'm saying this. This is not the time to play around. This is not the time to play church. This is not the time to just have church attendance and that's it and go home and then live your life and then come home, come here. And then, no, no, this is not the time for that. This is the time to make a decision because when you make that decision and you stand in the midst of your brothers and sisters that are coming against you, that you still stand there and still believe that Yahweh is God for you. Then that's when the anointing, God's going to turn up the anointing because he said it. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. The availability for all flesh is there. But it's up, it doesn't fall upon all flesh because not all will make that choice. Don't make it, if, not making a choice, you've already made a choice. So we're going to have to step up. We have all kinds of excuses. I've been in ministry for 40, what, 40 something years, and, and I have heard excuse after excuse after excuse why they can't do that, why they can't keep their commitment, why they, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I want to say in their face, yeah, go ahead, keep talking. I've heard that before, um, teen times, all right? Just get, take it up with God because you're disappointing Him. My well, wife says, you know, why do we always have to do it? We always have to step up. We always have to keep it. We always have to, you know, it's like, and it says, but yeah, but look what God's done in our lives. Praise the Lord. Look how far God has brought. Even me, I was not the leader I needed to be in even my own home. My wife at times would take up the slack. And I would just say, hey, you know what? I, I'm, I, I'm the head of the home. Oh, yeah, really? Shoot, prove it. Yeah, I mean, she didn't say that, but I mean, that's... I mean, I could look back the way I was, and it's like now God gave me a chance to, to grow up and start taking the leadership and love her. 
in spite of me, in spite of her, or however, we still love. If we go through through some little little disagreements, we're always going to have disagreements. It's part of life. But see, the love doesn't change. Praise the Lord. See, now, that, I went through all, all that, and it helped me to mature and to grow up for this time, for this season. When I myself was a follower, I follow people. Okay, you want to do that? Okay. You want to do that? Okay. You want to do that? Okay. If I did that, and if I continued to be that way, I would not be standing here today. Now I do something that totally goes against who I was before. And this is really who I'm supposed to have been. And this is what God created. I didn't see it because of dysfunction. But when that dysfunction moved away, I realized who I was. And I says, I can't just bow down. I fight. I can't help it. Sometimes my wife says, this whole thing. I said, I don't know. You can agree with that. But I don't. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. And it's not that she doesn't not agree. She does agree. She just said, takes a different take at it, you know, you know, just, you know, hold it back. I said, I can't because that's wrong. You know, so my approach is that way, but that's my makeup. And they realized that was my makeup. And so therefore I said, okay, now I'm going to trust you with my word because now you're not going to back up. Now you're going to have a whole lot of people give all kinds of excuses and you're, you're going to keep going. Now, are you going to feel like you want to quit? Yeah. Umpteen times. When you're a leader, you're always going to feel like you're, you're going to feel like you want to quit. You say, okay, I, I, that's it. That's the last draw. Three. I've had it. Two, you know, and, and, and it's like, when do we say it's the last draw? Every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep yourself away, bro. <laughs> and then watch this. When do we say it's the last draw for somebody that keeps giving excuses? We don't. I, we can't say that. Oh, it's the last draw. I know excuses. You've done all these excuses. I'm, I'm fed up with you. Now, I, that's not my place. You have to live with your excuses. But guess what? I get to live the way I get to live. Praise God. The blessings of God come upon me, overtake me. Hallelujah. And I get to have a, a, a marriage that's solid. I get to have that. See, that's part of being faithful and not making excuses. I can add all kinds of excuses. There's times I've had been struggles in ministry. I remember years ago, I struggled. My wife and I had some disagreement, and I was going to get on the phone and just call one of people, those <laughs> associates or something and just, hey, you know what? Uh, I, I, something came up. I, 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 it's out of my control, <laughs> which it was. Out of my control. Uh, could you take the service? But something inside of me would not let that happen. I know couples that will get in a fight. I don't want to come to church. Hey, what happened? Oh, we were fighting. Okay, the devil's going to make sure that you always fight. Just when it's time, Saturday night, when it's church time, when we get ready for church Sunday. Things happen on Saturday nights. Don't you, don't be ignorant of the devices of the devil. All of a sudden, you got a sore throat. Oh, I got something coming up. No, fight it. Devil hears everything you say. And he'll use it against you. We don't fight against flesh and blood. He's right there listening to everything. He's only, he only can move when there's something that comes out negative. That's when he can move. We give him permission. Praise God. So I tell my wife, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep doing it. That's all. They may not do it, okay, but I'm going to do it till God says stop. That's the only time. I may shake. I may, I may waffle a little bit. But that, that's, that, you know what waffle is? It's not the spirit. It's the flesh. And so you go over your mind. It. Okay, flesh, here. Get back up here. Right there. Now stay there. I got to move in the spirit. I got to hear what God is saying. You got to hear what God is saying. Sound the alarm. I'm doing it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you hear the alarm. You hear the trumpet. I'm sounding the trumpet. Trumpets were a lot in the Old Testament. 
It meant something. Different things. It meant something. To retreat, to attack, to, to get up, to settle down, to, you know, it's just different things. And we are, we are so hearing the trumpet of the land instead. Come on. I'm telling you, hear, and I'm telling those in the media, stop listening to the voices that are out there, out there that are talking. Start listening to the trumpet call, the true trumpet call. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. It's now preparation time. Thank you, Jesus. Paul talked, spoke to the, a, a young preacher, 2 Timothy chapter 4. He said this in verse 2, but I'm going to read this from the amplified version. I'm going to amplify it. Preach the word, he told him, as an official messenger. Who, do, who are we? We're messengers. I was going there. Don't jump. <laughs> We are ambassadors of the Most High God. We are His representatives. So I, I may sound the trumpet, but where your sphere of where you are at, in, your, in contacts you make, you need to sound the trumpet. You need to, if you got Christians that are around you, you need to sound the trumpet to them. Tell them, hey, they're looking at it and they're saying, oh man, look what's going on. Yeah, the trumpet is being sounded. We need to get together. We need to get things together. We need to get our lives together. We need to start answering what the trumpet is saying. The Lord is at hand. Hallelujah. So what is Jesus going to do? He will cut it short for the elect's sake. And the elect's sake now, you study this out for yourself. But the elect saint is the remnant. Yes. Not all the church. Some, the majority of the church will be left behind. And I'm not an escapist to say, okay, when it gets, starts to get tough, God, we're out of here. No, no, no. We don't know how far we're going to get into it. With the persecution, the hard things, where you have to stand and stand and have it done all the stand. And you're over there just gripping and, and going. And, and But see, you're rising above. You're rising above. You're being an overcomer. You're an overcomer. You're an overcomer. You're moving by the Spirit of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that's what's making the big difference there as opposed to those that are not moving that way. And you're going and you're going. And just right when you're moving, just like Elijah. I uh, mean, Elijah, but Enoch. Enoch is a picture of the church. He kept walking with God and walking with God and walking with God, and then he was not. Disappeared. And that is the picture of the church. That's the picture of the church, that he's coming for a glorious church, a church without spot, without wrinkle. It's kept himself pure from the things of this world. Doesn't act like the world, doesn't smell like the world, doesn't respond what the world says. It's only responding to what the master, the king, is saying, Jesus, head of the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, and those are the ones, and they're so busy. And they're not looking, well, God, take me out of here. God, take me. No, no, no. Uh-uh. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get myself ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go after people and let them know, in this word that's going out there, let them know that the Lord is at hand. And so I, we need to bring as many people into the kingdom, into the kingdom now, 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 into the kingdom now. He says, oh, I, I, I'm just, I'm not ready for, well, when are you going to be ready? Because you need to do it now. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. You got no promise of tomorrow. You may not wake up when you go to sleep. He says, so you need to do it now. We need to do, so we need to be soul minded. We need to be people minded because Jesus died for the world. So we need to look around. Don't be selfish and look around and start doing that. And reach out to other people. Whoever you come in contact with, we need to do that continually. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then, as we do that, and we're so busy and we're so occupied with the kingdom of God that the church is there and the church is not. The remnant, all of a sudden. They walked with God, obedience to God with no excuses. They didn't have, ex they don't make up excuses. In the remnant, they will not have people, Christians that will come to the pastor and say, well, I got this, you know, I got this, I got, no excuses whatsoever. 
You have to go by what your own heart says. We're not going to go and tell you. And I'm not putting some kind of guilt on anybody. I'm just, you just need to. If you hear the heart of God, you won't have excuses. You won't. You know, sometimes you may tell people, oh, uh, listen to your heart. But you know what? Sometimes your heart may be all messed up. And you listen to your heart and you just stay messed up. So I'm talking about people that are hearing, you hear your heart that are blameless before God, and God will tell you. God will let you know. Hallelujah. Oh, I know I should do this, but I got that. See, right there, you know God's already saying, but you're second-guessing yourself. Don't second-guess yourself, because when you second-guess yourself, that's when the enemy moves in. And he puts that doubt. Because there is no doubt with faith. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Are you all hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me over, over the, out there? Yes. yes. Come on now. He, uh, the preacher, he says, preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is, watch this, when the time is right and even when it is not. <laughs> Keep your sense of urgency. Oh, man. I, I really sense an urgency more than I ever have in my whole entire Christian life, only because of what I'm seeing around. Yes. Urgency has really, it's almost like I, I'm going to throw it out there, put it, I'm going to put it out there, and, and, and I don't care what, however people take it, I'm going to just put truth out there, because you know what? There's an urgency now. And he says, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. <laughs> so you know what? What we look for, we look for an ideal time. I remember I used to, here's an excuse I used to get as a pastor when I, from some of the members. He goes, you know, I can't keep my commitment because, you know, my kids are, 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 in, are in the, you know, they, they bother me when they're in service and, you know, and, and they act up when they're in ch children's ministry and stuff. And so, you know, that sometimes sometimes I'll come, sometimes I can't. But, you know, I'll have to wait till they get a little older. So I'll, I'll come, and, and, and then when they get older, I can have more control. Yeah, less control when they get older. Because <laughs> they may act out when they're little, but when they get bigger, they get bigger act out. <laughs> but really, parents used to give us those excuses. You know, and it's like, well, I can't wait for you. I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving. And God's not going to wait for you. He's going to keep moving. There are souls that are going to hell. And you want to wait for that? And those are excuses. Those are ex plain excuses. Some of you that are watching out there probably need to, you need to be out here. Not probably. You need to be out here. But you got an excuse. COVID. You got, you got an excuse. You have an excuse. Why don't you say, I'm full of fear. I'm tormented. And be honest, that's all. And then get, let God get in there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why I'm going to show you, i got to give you the scriptures because you're going to go and say, oh, Pastor, you're just giving your own opinion. No, I'm not giving my own opinion. Here. He says, you're going to put it out there. There's an urgency. And when God says to sound the alarm, I better sound the alarm. And he says, there's a multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Okay, we're in the valley of decision. It's decision time. All right? So then he says, he says, correct those. Oh, we don't like this. Correct those who err in doctrine and behavior and warn those who sin. Oh. <laughs> those kinds of preachers like myself are not very popular. But there's coming a time when the people that are going to realize that many of the other preachers were lying to them, they're going to look for a righteous preacher because they realize that they need somebody that is righteous, not perfect, but righteous, Amen. that believes in righteousness, that believes in unblemish, that believes that not to hear the things of the world, what it's saying, and not to agree with the world. This is a time to fight. Is it convenient? No, it's not convenient. It's inconvenient. But he says to do it when it's inconvenient or convenient. Do it all the time. Whether it's favorable or unfavorable, do it all the time. Don't listen to the, to the majority because the majority are the ones that miss it. The majority did not enter into the promised land. Hello? 
correct those, okay? But watch this. Here's a, here, you'll like this one. Exhort and encourage those who are growing toward spiritual maturity. I'll encourage you. You're growing. I see you growing. Whew, God's moving on you. I'll, I will do that. I know I, you know, I see Kim as she was ministering on, on, on to the women on, uh, on the Facebook. And, uh, and it's like, I was listening. I said, oh, man, see, has a maturity. Then I see some of the other ones, Will and Pablo. You know, I says, Mark, you know, I see the maturity that's there. So I tell him, I said, man, you've been, I think Mark ministers last Wednesday. And I says, wow, I guess you prayed over that one. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. yeah. I said, well, it shows. It shows. Because you know why? Because there are things that are prevalent, things that are at hand. And we're saying the same kind of things. You're hearing the same God. So when you get in prayer, you'll get his heart. And then we get our hearts together. And it causes unity. Praise the Lord. Some of the things you said, uh, um, Liz, it's like, it's right there. Sometimes you get strong. <laughs> she, been, she was strong. She was strong out in the st things I heard. She was strong out in the streets when she was running the streets. She was strong. She said, I, I fear, I fear no woman and I fear no man. And she was when she said that, she was, you know, she's short. She's looking up at me. I fear no man. <laughs> and her husband says, her husband says, you know, John Fall, he goes and he goes, Man, you know, she's tough, you know. He's like, that's just what her husband, he knows. But you know what? Transfer that over into the kingdom. See? When you transfer that over and that toughness and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be part of the remnant. Come on. Amen. You know what they call them in the army? Special forces. You know what they call them in the Navy? The SEALs. Praise the Lord. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? They don't go. They go. They, they up their scale of training and I look at the Christians today they have excuses they're not even go, they're, they're not even getting the basic because they're full of excuses they let their children run their decision who is the parent the child it's like whoa whoa it's backwards I know some of you are listening out there to me it's not talking to anybody here it's out there right <laughs> You know, just, just say, ouch. And if I'm really your pastor, I mean, you can just, those out there, just, just say, oh, man, my pastor's really hitting me hard. You know, well, then, okay, you got hit. Now, what are you going to do about it? Because I want you to just say, oh, pastor, that was a good word and all. Okay, now, let me see it. If it's good word, let me see it in your life. Because I'll t this is what God's been ministering to me. He says, if you continue in that place, you will miss it. Because it's going to get tough. And see, the Navy SEALs and the Special Forces, the Green Beret, I don't know if they have the Green Beret anymore, but the, the, do they still have them? I think they went more in the Special Forces. You know, they, they, they go in there. They do the more tedious training that the General uh, Armed Forces don't do. Why? Because they're going to do some tedious work. And they cannot be afraid because they got to go in unison and they got to back up one another. You know what I mean, we're together. We're not going to fight with each other. No, no, no. Uh, you, you, you're in trouble. I'm coming to you. I'm in trouble. You're coming to me. We got each other's backs. And that's the way the church needs to be. Instead of with excuses, no more excuses. Cancel them now. Now people will be afraid to give, talk to me now, huh? No, it's okay. Be afraid. But all I want you, want you to do is change. I, I, they'll be afraid not to say nothing. Just disappear. I says, well, I, I'll pray for you, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to get tough. COVID's nothing. It's nursery. Come on. It's going to get tougher. Because a lot of people in this government, this, it's going to change in this election. And people, it's amazing. People are, are, are wanting somebody, a, 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 an administration that wants socialism straight in your face. 
And you got, this is what irritates me. You got Christians. This is where I got, watch my flesh here. You, you got Christians. Christians that want that. That tells me they don't know their Bible. There is no socialism in here. They don't know it. Praise the Lord. I better get ready to close, otherwise your, your flesh will start rising up. And... and what does it say? He goes on to tell T Timothy, with an inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. i got to be patient. <laughs> For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate information. Accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. That's the reason why when I read that, I hadn't read that before, where, where when God ministered to me a few weeks ago and he says, just give them truth. Don't argue with them, just give them truth. And when I look at that and I says, oh, yeah, there it is. Tolerate sound doctrine. They're, gonna, they're not going to tolerate sound doctrine and accurate inst 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 accurate instruction instruction that challenges them with God's truth. They're going to be challenged with the truth. So when people are going to argue or people go against you and they go against, they're going against this, don't take it personally. Do you have to fight it from doing that? Yeah. I got to, I got to keep my flesh right up here. And you, you get hit, you see, you get bothered. You know, my wife feels it. Boom. She feels that. So tell me. It's like, oh, God. And it's like, come on, flesh. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Don't move. No, no, no. He wants to get. And then it's like, okay, I got to back up. Because when you get your flesh out of here, it gets worried. Weary. 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 You know? It gets worn out. And it's like, when you get over here, okay, now spirit come out. Then you get refreshed. You get restored. Praise the Lord. So what I want to do is, I, I didn't get a chance. You know what? Maybe we'll have part three. We need to hear this. Decision time. I'm going to show you what Jesus said. I'm going to show you what even, even what John the Baptist said of what is, of what's going to be happening. And we're already here. We're already in it. We used to just read it. You know, we read our, we read our scriptures, you know. And then he says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we never related it for today. Because now it's time to, if you look at the scripture, you'll find all, even Old Testament, you'll find it's relating to now. It is so real. It is so tangible. But you can't give away something you don't got, so you better get it first. So when you got it, it'll change you. It'll transform you. And what will come, what will come out of your mouth is life. Because you're giving life. So that means this, no matter what people call whatever virus or whatever disease and stuff like that, you know, it's all under your feet. Yeah. Right at the very beginning, praise the Lord. And at the beginning of all this, I remember God, and I, I know it's God, I felt this, God said this, he goes, when they started coming with this COVID junk, you know, saying, saying this, he says, he says, Treat it like a regular virus, or it will overtake you. It will overtake you. Because then what will overtake you with what people are saying, and then attaches to you, and you come in agreement with CDC and what they're saying. And then when you come in agreement with that, you become that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. But praise the Lord. That Jesus, or God's word said this. He goes, well, Jesus said it. He said, you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And he said, nothing shall by any means hurt me. Come on. Right. So, so that means, oh, I was just next to a COVID person. I was talking to him and all and, and stuff. And he said, oh, no, no, no. You start fighting in your, in your mind. If you have to fight in your mind, we need to still build our faith. Okay? Because it needs to be. The thought and then leave. 
because you can't help when the thought comes. But when the thought comes, leave. Get it, get it out. You see, because it is, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, COVID, it's under my feet. Jesus said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said it. When does that come into being? He said nothing. Oh, but Jesus, you know, you got to understand, we're 21st century, we got COVID-19 here, you know, so uh, you probably didn't cover that on the cross. That's the way Christians are acting today. They're not saying that, but they're acting that. He said nothing shall by any means hurt you. I don't, I, I'm sorry, you act the way you want to act, but I'm going to act the way God says to act. And there is no convenient time. It's inconvenient right now. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. You want to wear a mask? I'll wear a mask. Whatever. But you know what? You stop telling me not to sing, I'm going to sing. Because now they're going to get ready to tell you what you can preach and what you cannot preach. They're already in that midst right now. They're already going to tell you that you cannot preach. You cannot, you cannot preach against homosexuality. Oh, okay, we better dance around that one. Because, you know, I want to keep the church open and stuff, you know. We gotta do, we're going to be dancing. We're already dancing. Okay. So now they're going to bring this in, and they're going to control the pulpit. So they can control the people. So there'll be no truth going out there. At least don't talk about the truth. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get on the same page. Let's talk about community service. There's, there's non-confrontation in regards to that. We're doing humanity service. We're being nice to people. They need clothes. They, need, they all need that. Sure. Not taking that away. But we don't want to talk about homosexuality. We don't want to talk about babies being killed and slaughtered. Bail. Bail. You know, we don't want to talk about that. See, it's coming this way. But you know what? I'm not going to stop. So where do I have to start? Where I don't, where, where, where I doesn't, I can't allow this stuff that's going on COVID to, to stop me. I, I got to start now. I got to start. I can't wait till, okay, he's passed the law. You can't t talk against homosexuality. You can't talk. See, I, I got to start now. You got to start now. Praise the Lord. And if you're not starting now, you will give in to the other. Pastors don't do that. You know, let, let's just be nice to him. You know, God loves him. I know God loves him. But the, what the, he, he loves him so much, but what they're doing is going to kill him. He's going to send him to hell. But God loves him because God wants to restore them to say, that's not you. I didn't make you that way. God don't make mistakes. Made you male and female. See, he don't make mistakes. But Christians are walking. There are preachers that are actually giving up this behind the pulpit. So they can be politically correct. And deliver the social gospel. It's out there. Praise the Lord. Time for decision. Out there in the media. Facebook. YouTube. It's time for you to make a decision. You may have liked what I had to say. Or you may not have liked what I had to say. But what I had to say was what God speaking to through me. Otherwise, if it was my thing of my own flesh, I'd say, if you want to go do what you want to do, then do what you want to do. There's nothing I can do to change it. Nothing. Okay. But you know what? I love you so much that I don't want you to miss it. So before we sign off, I'm going to pray for you. I lift up right now those in the homes and those that are here now, live, and those that are going to hear later on. I pray, Father, that you show them the ways. Just stop. It sounds so innocent of the decisions that is made because of what's around us. But, Lord, I pray, Father, that they will realize what is happening to wake up and to see that they must make a decision to start standing now for what they believe. So in the name of Jesus, minister to their families, Lord. Minister to each individual. 
Let them come and let this word saturate their hearts. Even if their flesh got in the way and, and it got upset, hurt, offended. I pray, Father, that they will allow themselves justice to back off and let you speak to them because you will honor your truth and let them meditate on it, Father, for they know where they're at. I pray, Father, that they will get to where they need to be. They know if they're really praying with sincerity and they're doing it faithfully here in the word. They know it. They know it. So, Father, minister to them, oh God, your love in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Bless you. We'll see you next time.